The theme of today, I'll show you this in pen because pen is cool. Um, but, and it's like if you do pen, it's got to be like fountain or calligraphy pens. This mm -hmm. was like five bucks at Michael's. It's cheap, it's terrible. It doesn't write that well, and you have to kind of push hard. But if you get like one of the twenty to sixty dollar fountain pens, um, it'll be like your absolute best dream. Um, so the um, the sort of theme that I want to guys want you guys to do today, I want you to stand up to draw today, is just to be just to be loose um, in your drawing. But there's there's loose. That there's a looseness that's unproductive and there's a looseness that's productive, right? Like if I'm drawing this like weird fucky piece of, of wood, you know, and I'm loose about it and I just kind of go, and I look at it once and I just kind of go, whatever, you know, that's not really productive in any way, shape, or form. And I mean, it plots the vague shape of the of the thing, right? Ultimately, but it doesn't like you know, do me any good, right? Or um, because the, the tendency is that you want to do, do things right, you know, the first time. So you go on to the, the object and you start following the contour, trying to get it right and exact. And you may actually wind up getting things sort of close to the actual uh, contour. But the thing is, is you have focused in on it and if you mess up, then how do you go back and make changes, you know? You see what I'm saying? So I'm going around the contour trying to get it perfect the first time. So what you want is a looseness that isn't right the first time, but allows you to be right by the end. You know? um, I say right and wrong, but there's not really, like your drawing doesn't have to exist per se, and it doesn't have to exist in a particular way either. You know? so, um, so when I go to, to draw, what I want to draw out is like the essential motion of this um, object. So I'm, what I'm looking for is kind of the parts of the forms that seem to seem to move and how they interact and flow together. Um, and this is a very animator's way of drawing, actually. I'm having to push really hard with this pen because it won't deposit ink otherwise, which is really annoying and frustrating. And so what I do is every time that I curve and make the make a curve and a bend, I'm trying to like feel out the form feel how the form changes. And uh, I can immediately, at this point, go ahead and draw in the cast shadow. Um, and then I can continue to feel where the, how the forms evolve. And it's really fun with organic objects because they tend to have more of a flow. Um, and that's why I love, like I would love to do a whole drawing class just outside it's just landscape stuff. Because um, I think that would be really super productive in terms of like getting you guys to feel this organic flow that happens. And so I can use the contour if it helps me with the flow of the object. Because the contour is part of it, right? And then, you know, I want to get inside the contour a lot, as much as possible, to try to feel how this object kind of begins to, to flow together. So it looks like Disney Animator's way of doing it, right? So I can immediately get some, get some shadows in. And for the ground shadows, I want to go, um, I want to use a mark making method that's counter to the actual object, right? So this way, you know, this object has a lot of flow, so ground is going to have no flow, just flat points. And now I can go in and I can increase the, the sort of, the concept, the concept of that flow by u choosing marks that follow the form or add to the form in some way. And then kind of change and evolve as the form changes and evolves. Here's a funky little slice out of here. This is all really very dark.
and this whole thing is in is in shadow, so this is gonna have a lot of like forms. And I can begin working into the shadows before I even uh, kind of have the forms fully defined, because they can they can help me define the form. So that's a quick sketch, remaining leaf. And then if I want to just finish it off a little bit, I can do things like add a ground plane. Or at least hint at a ground plane. And that can, that can kind of change stuff. So one of the cool things about a fountain pen is that um, I can take a brush so this is a water brush. It's it's sort of a cheesy watercolor, it's like weekend warrior kind of thing. <laughs> but um, you know, you can uh, use it in a non cheesy way. Um, and this is this this I found is like the fastest combo for a full value drawing. That's and the cool, cool thing about it, yeah, right. You want one? <laughs> you do. I'm ready. Go on. The thing is the is the fountain pen. Go online and get a good fountain pen. That's like about forty to sixty bucks. I want to try the Safari fountain pen, it's like 20. Um, I'm going to buy that and let you know how it is. Yeah, so this is, this is a water, it's called a water brush for obvious reasons. It holds the water in the brush. And what's cool about it is that it's portable, you know, you can take it around. And here, you know, since I've picked up enough of, enough ink, I can do like that, that poster effect now without really adding any extra line. The poster effect. That's just so yeah, cool. yeah, the poster effect is the idea that you just take whatever's in darkness and uh, and make it dark. You know, without differentiating the value at all. Um, they had different colors or just black. Um, just well, you can get whatever ink you want. You know, that's the cool thing. You can get red ink, blue ink. Um, can you do that after the ink dries? Yeah, the ink's all dry. The ink's all dry. The thing is, it's water-based ink, so it just re-wets. And then wherever it's wet, and I want to get like the full dark value, you know, I just go back in with it, and it and it starts out very dark because it's slightly damp. Yeah, the pen doesn't help. What's that? It's a pen. Yeah, it's not. This isn't a good pen, but it was, you know. I just got this idea in my head this morning that I wanted to show you guys this. So, so I went to Michael's and got and grabbed like a cheap calligraphy pen. How much is a good one? Like 40 to 60 and I'm going to try the, there's this $20 one that uh, that this company makes that I'm going to try out and let you know how it is. You know. Could you also just use a regular paintbrush and just like... Yeah, I mean, you could get India ink and, and, and a brush and or this brush and a little India ink and do it. Or you could mix. You could put ink and water in here if you wanted, and that would be a method. But I like the pen, you know, because I do the pen drawing, and then I can then I can do the value like later, um, and then you just kind of make sure that it's like evened out. And then if it, as it thins out, you'll you'll see that the that the ink will separate into a couple of different color tones, so you can manipulate that too. Mm -hmm. Ink and water. It's super simple. Yeah, and this is great because it's portable. You know, have it like throughout art school. I carried one of these and a fountain pen in my pocket all the time. I was never without it, just because I could do a five-minute sketch while I'm waiting for somebody or whatever. You know, and then this helps you. This helps you like reobserve as you go along. You know, because you can you can draw with the brush too. If you haven't noticed, so everything you do, everything you do from here on out, you know, with the brush is just reinforcing structures, right?
Yeah, this puts quick ink drawings in reach for you guys. Yeah. So, that's like a quick way to, this is a cool method, it's real quick. But it, you don't have to have that to do the same thing, right? It's, you know, the, the feel that you can get with like, you can do a, a similar feel with, with like ebony or whatever, you know, art, you just go through and you, you try to feel the motion of the form, you know, and how it evolves, right? So today, concentrate on you, on standing up, drawing these forms as they as they flow together, you know, and how they connect and stuff. So the medium doesn't really matter as much as, as this idea of like learning to feel flow, and you can do it in, in inorganic objects too. You know, even though it is, you know, if you're drawing like a bottle or something like that. You're still feeling this, the flow of how it's kind of like coming together. Or whatever, right? Question? Mm -hmm. hey, you guys can try this out if you want. It's a pen thing. I don't. 